All right, guys, let's go ahead and get started. Welcome, everybody, to the FFL SkyPoint in-home clinic. Um, appreciate Stephen Yee for letting me host today's call. Um, and today, I'm obviously going to go over my in-home. So um, I don't think I have the best, but I have something that, that works for me. Um, so if you guys take anything, even if it's one little tip, um, hopefully it brings value to whether you're watching this live or watching this on YouTube. Um, but so I, I'm going to, I personally do everything in home. So today I'm going to go over how I do things in home and, and how it works for me. I've done virtually as well. And any questions in terms of where we're comparing with virtually or in home, um, we can, we can get those. We'll do a little Q and A here at the end, if anyone has any questions on that, but I'm going to go over how I sell um, final expense um, in home. And in any outside questions, whether it be mortgage, uh, final expense, internet leads, like they all kind of wrap together. Um, but the big thing I want to talk about today is just ha having structure in, in the home, whether it be in the home or virtually is the same thing. But because that, that's super important. That's where I think I found a, a lot of success in the beginning is when I figured out how to have structure and realized that, hey, I'm the only one with the insurance license. Um, and that even though, even if I was brand new, I, I knew more than the client. And in the beginning, a lot of times I, I was scared that I didn't know enough. So I do want to focus on, on that. And then in the beginning, when I would go into the home, because I, I didn't have my in-home down like I do today on, I mean, I could literally go through it step-by-step uh, step how I do it, honestly, in my sleep, just because I've had so many reps. And that's the only difference between a, a veteran agent and a new agent. You just don't have as many reps. So that's why we always preach, go out there and get to your first 100 appointments as quickly as you can. But when, when I started, I had a little honestly, just a, a little folder and had some loose paper in it. And I just, I didn't have my whole in-home down, but like I took from other people and made my own. And I just had little bolts and points that I made sure I hit on. And I had it open. I was sitting across from the client. I had it open and I could glance down on where I was at and knew I had big bolded what I needed to talk about and little key notes that I wanted to make sure I didn't forget or didn't miss. Um, and that, that helped me a lot. And if I can recommend that for anybody, that's what I would recommend you do as well. Whether it's on the phone or in the home, you want to have those little bulleted point uh, notes so that you're hitting everything on um, that you're supposed to. And then you don't forget halfway through the appointment. Oh, crap, I forgot to talk about that. And that's going to like, I, oh, I forgot to mention bank info. And then you get to the bank info. They're like, why do I need to give you that? And everybody hates that. And we've all been through it, me personally as well. Um, so that's super important. I want to go over that and then I will, I'll, I'll give an example of what my in-home is like. Um, and then we could talk about whether objections, questions in the home, all that, all that good stuff. So, um, the, the first thing I always, I always talk about is first bulleted point is why I, I had big, that's where you're, you're getting, why, why am I here? Why did you fill this out? How am I here to help you? Um, and I, and I, I want to know that in the very beginning, um, cause that gives me an idea where to go from there. So that's the, that's the first thing why figure out why they filled out and why I'm there. Second is beneficiary. So who's going to be here to pick up the pieces when you do pass and that why leads directly into the beneficiary usually. So that it all ties together. There's a reason, uh, we, I do what I do when I'm doing the in-home. There's not really a reason or things I ask just for no reason at all. Um, so that's important, figuring out and who that beneficiary is, and then asking multiple questions about that beneficiary and their relationship with that beneficiary. That's where you get to, you open up to them and you show them that you're not just the average insurance agent that is super transactional and doesn't really care about what they're doing. They're just trying to find just commission breath, get a sale. That, that's where you separate yourself. Um, and I'll go into an example when, when I go through that here in a minute. Um, and then uh, the, the third bulletin point is um, 
you could put structure, you could put um, in, in home process, how, whatever you really want to put on that third point. But that third point is just um, talking about um, how the appointment process is going to go and what we're going to do today. And I'll deep dive in that in my in-home scenario as well. Um, and then um, fourth is just financial inventory. So, and after that, you're telling them how the appointment's going to go. Then you go straight to the financial inventory. You go through the, basically the, the financial inventory. And then hopefully everybody on their fifth point, ha, um, you can put sale right there because, uh, or family helped, uh, however you want to, to put that. And that, that's really uh, how my in-home works. It, it's broken down to, into four, four or five different points. Doesn't really matter if it's mortgage, final expense, internet leads. It's all the same. Um, essentially, just your questions are worded just a little bit differently. Um, so yeah, so let's jump right into it. So if you have all those those points down, then let's deep dive on each point. So sitting down with the client, um, showing them. Um, I love final expense mailers because I can show them what they filled out. Show them the final expense mailer. Hey, um, so this is obviously what you filled out for uh, about the burial and final expenses. So did you, I guess, tell me about your situation. Do you, do you have no coverage in place? Do you need more or, or what's going on? And just let them talk to me. Um, whatever they're going to say, that's where I, I'm trying to get them to open up. The people that aren't opening up, then you just have to ask a little bit more questions about the why. Um, because the, the, you'll have the people, oh, I'm just looking for a quote. I, I'm just looking. It came in the mail. I filled it out. Um, and and that, that's where we are the professional. We have to take control back. People don't just fill stuff out for fun, especially the direct mail mailers. They don't go in there, write down all their information, take it out to the mail and send it off. So asking a few, few more questions. Um, and um, so basically like, so if, if they give you that, so, so do you currently have anything to take care of your burial or, or no? No, I don't. Got it. Okay. I see why you filled this out. Makes sense. Or yes, I do. Um, okay. How much coverage do you have? Um, and, and figuring out what they have, do they think they need more? And, and that's where little situations like we can take it even, I mean, I could do a whole call just on that. So we can, we can, you, how you, ask those questions and where you go from there is all going to depend. That's why every case is different with when you're sitting with those people, you just got to figure out what they have when they got it. Are they looking to add more? Are they just looking to replace what they currently have? Uh, but you're just getting, whoever asked the most questions wins. Paul McLean has always said that. And that's so true in our business um, is you, you're not, you don't want to just talk to people. If you're talking to your clients, you want to have, you want to be gathering information that helps you help them. Um, and that's where you get the why out. And then, like I said, the why transitions into the beneficiary. Okay, so who's who's going to be here to pick up the pieces uh, when you do pass, Mary? Um, well, my 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 daughter. Um, got it. Okay, what's your daughter's name? Get her name, Rebecca. Okay, Rebecca. So um, so how how old is Rebecca? Do you have a good relationship with her does she live here locally does she have any kids does she uh what she do for a living is it a good job does she own her own home like you're you're gathering information about the beneficiary because she just told you rebecca is going to be the one picking everything up so she wants to protect everything so you ask all those questions and then god okay so it, it sounds like you you just want to make sure everything is taken care of so Rebecca doesn't have to come out of pocket for anything to to pay for your burial and final expenses is that about right and, and you're asking that back to them yeah of course not I, I, I definitely don't want to do that and and so that that takes you to that and then after that I, I figured out why I'm there who the beneficiary is who we're actually going to protect and now I know if I'm on a legit appointment or not Right then and there, within five to seven minutes, shouldn't it take longer than that? I'm I'm through that process. I figured out who, why I'm there, and if they're serious and if they if they actually if they actually want this, because I'm not going to be on an appointment that that they're not serious about it. Um, and then the last thing, like I said, structure. So going through the structure. So 
that a little, little segue, what I always say after I get done with the why and the beneficiary, um, I just take a step, look up at them like, God, okay, well, this is extremely helpful. Everybody I sit with is literally different. So this better helps me how I can, I can help you. Um, so I appreciate that. But, and then that's where I, I pull out my license. So basically before we do anything, I, I just want to verify with you who I am. Here is my state license. That's got my license number on there. I leave it on the table. You're more than welcome to take a picture of that if you would like. Um, that's just for your records. Um, but uh, yeah, honestly, most people just want to make sure they don't have some random weirdo in their house. Um, sometimes it gets a chuckle, sometimes it doesn't. Um, and after that, I pull out the credibility sheet with all the carriers. So here, um, I'm just the field underwriter. My whole job is literally just to get you accepted somewhere. So we work with these 30 plus different companies. We literally shop them all. We're not tied to any one company. They're honestly fighting for all your business. So whoever's going to uh, get you the best coverage for the cheapest price, we usually go with because um, it doesn't really matter to us. We're like I said, we're not directly tied to one company. So don't get me wrong. They're all uh, great companies, all been in business over 100 years. So that's why whoever you go with, it, you can't really go wrong. Whoever's going to more bang for your buck is usually what what we're after here um but yeah so how the how these cares are going to approve it is based on two things and that's your uh, prescription history and your medical history so today i will um <coughs> excuse me i will obviously go over a few health questions with you today as well as a, a few financial questions um and then after that i'll, I'll give you your different options with the, the coverages um, all the details of the product and obviously the, the prices because that's most important right um, i'll give you all of that and then at that point um we just either um apply for coverage or you decline the coverage so um like if you decline the coverage obviously we put you down that you declined it that you didn't want the, the 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 coverage in place and then we close your close your file that you did not want the coverage um, but when we apply um, we keep your case open for the next 30 days. Um, so during that 30 days, you can up the coverage, lower the coverage, literally do whatever you want to do um, at that point. But yeah, that application we sent in for approval today is all your basic information, including like your social for your prescription history, because that's what they're looking at to approve you or not. And then lastly is just your uh, uh, bank information, like your routing and account number, because if you are approved, it obviously comes out automatically. Does that make sense? And then They'll almost always say yes. And then I give them one more chance to object before we continue. After, does that make sense? I said, do you have any other questions before we get started? And if there's anything they're worried about, social, bank information, send in an application, anything, we're going to get it out of the way right then and there. Um, and then, okay, perfect. Nope. All good to go. Then um, I will go basically next thing. Perfect. Um, all I need to start is just your guys' driver's licenses. So I grab those up front, pull out the financial inventory, and I like to get the driver's license ahead of time because I, I'm very bad. Well, one, my handwriting is terrible, and I misspell things, so I like to get all of their information out. I can uh, get their height and weight on there, too. Um, so basically how all of that, give it back. Then I, I literally just go through the financial inventory, and it's it's not much deeper than that, but what what we're every everyone has a financial inventory but what separates everyone from having structure and not having structure is what i did before i got the financial inventory a lot of people in the very beginning they don't know what they're doing so they literally just go straight to this paper which is fine if that's all you do in the beginning then that's all you do it's better than not doing it at all um but as you get get this down and get better you're that's what is separating them from you because you get these people to open up if you can get them to open up in the first five minutes imagine what you can do through the financial inventory you're, you're just playing those little seeds of of the why and the beneficiary and if there's anything that you that you connect on tell them talk about it but if there's not don't don't lie to them they know you're lying um don't don't, don't lie don't make anything up but if you connect you connect um and then you just want to ask questions and and truly care don't ask them about their beneficiary if you don't if you don't give a crap. Don't ask about their kids if you don't give a crap. But like I can I can connect with that. I mean I've got wife I've got kids. I want to I want to protect them and I, and I assume the people I'm sitting with they want to protect their loved ones whether it be uh, 
parents, whether it be kids, whether it be grandkids, like you'll be, you'll be surprised. Like, and that's why you ask these questions because all that stuff comes out. You think like when you, who's going to pick up the pieces, it's, it's Rebecca. And if you just stop there, it's Rebecca and you didn't ask any other questions. Um, like they could, they could have a very bad uh, relationship with their daughter, but she's their only uh, living sibling that will take care of everything. So that's just what she told you. But by prying and asking more questions, then you talked about the grandkids. She might have a terrible relationship with the daughter, but loves her grandkids to death. And it's the grandkids that is bringing that emotional emotion out in the appointment. And then you're asking more questions about the grandkids. Okay. I mean, that, that, that's too bad. She didn't have a good relationship with Rebecca, but her two grandkids, she would die for them. So, all right, now we're going to talk about the grandkids all day. And we're going to talk about that. That's who we're protecting. So like, and that's when I, when I pull it all back together before I go to the financial trade. Okay. So it's honestly, it sounds like you just want to make sure everything's taken care of. Like no one's coming out of pocket when, when you pass away, but more importantly that it kind of sounds like you just want to make sure that the grandkids are taken care of when you pass. Is that right? And, and that's how I would reframe it or it, it's, and so that's kind of the, the transition that I would do. And, and that's the power of asking questions. Like if all you do is just ask a bunch of questions and, and get information, it's going to lead you to information that you need when you're showing options. Um, so I, I believe that's super important. And when you figure out what questions to ask, that's what these in-home clinics are for, to be able to ask us questions, ask me questions. What are the most important questions? What questions do you ask in every single appointment? Those are the things I would be, saying if I was sitting here watching this and when I was brand new. Um, so hopefully you guys have some questions up in here. But so I'm going through the financial inventory. Um, and basically, for the most part, you're just going through what's on there. We all have that. If you don't, FFLOnlineTraining.com. That's where the financial inventories are. Um, and basically going, going through that, that's the worst thing you do is go through it from the beginning to the end. But the, the key points I want to pull out of there is super, super, super important is uh, pulling their income out. So when, when you're sitting there and, and going through that whole process with them, getting their, uh, you obviously have their, have their basic information and you figure out what they do for a living. Are they uh, retired? Okay, what are you receiving on social security? Uh, what are you receiving on disability? What are you receiving? Any, any side jobs, uh, part-time jobs? Like you're getting their income, okay. Um, so you're bringing in about five grand a month. So at the end of the month, on average, what would you say you have left over after all, all your bills are taken care of? Mortgage, rent, groceries, gas, utilities, fun money, literally everything. What do you think on average you got left over? And this is, I get, when I got good at this, this is when, I mean, I learned this from Will Lore. So he was the king of this. Um, and you want to because you don't know what to show at the end unless you know that. You could assume, you could be at a trailer park and assume they're broke. But my biggest premium has been at a trailer park. So don't prejudge that you've got to literally figure out the facts, figure out what they have coming in, what they have left over. And a lot of time, one, people uh, won't want to tell you or they'll lie about how much they actually have. Um, so you want to break that down even further and take that to another step. They all, they all laugh at nothing. Um, and, and then you can kind of chuckle, but then like, but don't, don't let them off the hook that easy. Got it. Okay. Yeah. I, I know. So do you, uh, with everything going on, I totally get it. So would you say like you have less than 50 to a hundred bucks left over a month or more than that? And that's just a base point. Cause that's around what I want the premium at. Um, and, and they'll tell you, well, no, we got more than that. Um, probably and if they go from having nothing to tell you they have 700 bucks a month like red flags going off in my head uh you probably don't because you just told me you barely have anything and and then so i so i kind of challenge them on that like oh okay so you got like 700 bucks left over a month so is that is that like on a good month or a bad month and they'll probably tell you a good month got it okay what's a bad month look like and then because then if you because if you just got that 700, wrote it down, brand new agent, this is what I did. 
wrote the 700 down. I showed them something for 300 bucks a month. Like, what do you mean? You got 700 bucks left over. No, they don't. So that's why you got to kind of challenge them on that um, to get that to get that realistic number. Or they tell you like, no, we, we've got we've got three grand left over a month when they're like bringing in four grand uh, a month. And it's like something doesn't add up. Right. And then, OK, like and then ask that same question. So is that on a good month, bad month? And if you have to, uh, you go through the their bills one by one if you have to. Um, and, and then if, it, if it is an outrageous number, like we got 4,000. Okay. Um, let's, I'll just say two. I just want to be safe. Let's just say two. If you're having a bad month, something pops up, anything like that. Uh, we'll say you have about two. Um, and then, uh, you're still half from what they said. Um, and that's, that's kind of on exaggerating on the high end. Um, and, and then after that, how I tie all that together um, which I think has helped me is got it. Okay. Um, and only reason they make me ask you is because a lot of people don't like being asked about their income and stuff like that. And I always blame someone else outside of myself, blame our company, blame somebody that's in charge of me. And just the only reason they make me ask, honestly, is just to make sure you're not spending more than you're making. And I say it just like that every single time. Like I, I chuckle in the middle of there um, to be spending more than you're making. And they'll either say, oh, no, uh, of course not. And then you people want to be praised for how they're doing financially. And that's where you want to give them a compliment. Like they're, they have whatever the amount left over that they have. Like, awesome. Good for you. You guys have 400 bucks left over a month uh, with honestly, with everything going on, like people I sit with, I mean, you're doing a lot better than most. So congratulations on, on, on where you guys are financially. And you, you guys are really good with, uh, with your money, which that, 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 that's awesome. Uh, but yeah, they just want to, I, I legally can't let you put anything in place that you can't afford. Um, and then I go down to the health questions, go through the health questions, um, and the medical questions and figure out what I'm going to show them. Um, and then after I go through the health questions, like I said, this is like for, for final expense. Um, I am, if they can afford it, I am huge on just showing them the max and then the, uh, and then two other options. And what I've been doing with, with the, on the final expense side of things, what I love is obviously I always show three options and the middle option always happened around a hundred bucks. And something above 100 bucks and something below 100 bucks. I don't like anything less than 50 bucks unless they're legitimately living paycheck to paycheck, barely getting by. Then that's when I'll go below that when I know they can't really afford anything. They need something though. Um, so that's just what what I personally do. And then um, I just I basically gather got all their information. I know where I'm going. Um, and say if I'm showing all uh, final expense, I'll show final expense with one carrier because you don't want to confuse people. Um, just three different price points, basically. Um, and so I'll write them all down. I'll flip the paper over so they can't see it because I want them looking at me and paying attention. If you have the numbers out, they're literally just not paying attention, trying to read upside down the numbers and they're not hearing anything you're saying. They just want to know the price. So. Um, and then I explained the, the, the product to them. And for the most part, final expense, all, almost all the carriers, not, not all of them, but most of them, they're, what the product covers and includes is pretty much the same. Um, and I, 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 I vaguely go over what whole life final expense is. And um, so I'm going to show you three different options today. Um, and with these coverages, they're all it's permanent coverage, so you cannot outlive it. So um, that's super important. So it's not if Rebecca receives uh, this this death benefit; it's just when. And that's obviously when you pass away, and um, it build it, it builds cash value throughout uh, throughout your life as well. So that will slowly increase, um, and the longer you have it, the more that's worth, obviously. And the death benefit will never decrease on you, and the monthly premium will never increase on you, and that's very very important. Um, because um, I'm sure you're aware, the older you get, it's not like you're getting more money. So you're locked in your current age as of today, 67 years old, never goes up on you again. And uh, 
Also, it has a terminal illness rider. So doctor says you got 12 months to live. They'll front you 50% of that death benefit while you're living, um, which is, which is it kind of, well, kind of cool, but it's not cool because, I mean, you have a terminal illness, but it, it, did, it does give you, um, I guess, that, that freedom. And, and it's basically there to give you options. So you can take that, pay off some bills, pay for your medical bills. One last hoorah, knowing you got 12 months to live. Um, so it's there just, just options for you, basically. Um, but, um, and uh, what's really cool about it as well is it has an accidental rider included with it. Just It's just added with it, so it's free. Um, so if you die of an accident, um, car crash, fall down the stairs, fall off the roof, slip on ice, hit your head, and that's the reason you pass, um, then, uh, then it pays double um, to, to Rebecca. Um, so basically anything outside of a natural death, that's, that's basically considered an accident. Um, and then I show, so basically go over that. And then I say, so any questions before I show you these options? So if they have any questions in their head, I want that asked before numbers. Cause you want to get those objections out of the way before numbers. If there's any objections but that other, that, that deals with other than price, that's when I want it now. So I can go over that and then their, their mind is fresh and then they can focus. Um, and then they say, no, perfect. Okay, let me show you these options real quick. And then doesn't really matter. I don't have any specific way. I start high, I start low, it doesn't really matter. I start wherever, like it's either on the left side of the page or the right side, it doesn't really matter. So say for instance, I'm showing, so this option right here uh, is uh, for 5,000. Uh, it's $5,000 death benefit of natural death, death and accidents, 10,000. And that one is, uh, say, 75 bucks a month. And um, so, that, so that, that, that option right there will probably take care of like a, like a, a, a small cremation type deal. And this other, op this middle option here, that is um, for, uh, say, 15,000 uh, of a natural death, to die in an accident, it's 30,000, and that is 110 a month. And then this last option right here is, uh, $30,000 death benefit, dive in accident, $60,000, and that is $145 a month. Um, so, so again, basically the, uh, you, the, the, the $30,000 will definitely take care of a funeral and a little bit extra possibly for some, like, if you want to leave anything behind to the grandkids, and that would be kind of that option, the, the middle option, that, that's the $15,000. That, that should still take care of, of, of a burial or a cremation and leave some behind. And the, the smallest option that that'll basically just take care of a cremation probably really won't leave anything behind to the to the kids or grandkids or anything like that. But again, yeah, the five thousand is fifty or what I say five thousand seventy five bucks a month. Uh, Fifteen thousand is the one ten a month, and the thirty thousand is, uh, is uh, uh, forgot what I said one or one seventy five a month. Whatever it is, doesn't really matter. It's just uh, an example. So out of those three options, um, I guess if you were approved. Um, which one do you prefer? Hold on, let me back up. Sorry, before I do, before I say that, I do say, um, so I'm basically down there with them and we're looking at this together. So, so out of those three options, do you have any questions real quick? And I always say real quick. I don't say, do you have any questions? Cause I, I mean, we're not, we, if, if they have real questions then we'll get into it obviously. Um, but that's just kind of insinuate, insinuating and kind of not really, I guess it's pushing if you want to call it that, but getting them to anything like with the, with the product, like these are questions for like, like product questions, or I, if they want clarification on, on the price, if they want clarification, can I get something other than what you showed me? That's where I want those questions. Then after that, then that's when I say, got it. Okay. So I'm pointing with my pen. So out of these three options, um, I guess if you were approved, which one do you uh, prefer? and then just let them pick. No crazy sales tactic, no crazy salesy anything. It's literally let show them the options and let them pick and don't talk until they pick one or until they give you a question or they give you an objection. Um, and then basically from there, they pick one and it, then it's off to the races, pulling, pulling the e-app up and all that good stuff. Um, but, um, so that's kind of my, my in home from beginning to, to end. There's little things in there that I, that I might do in there that I'm, that I missed on, or I didn't really focus on, but everything I went over to 
over that is on the very, very important stuff that I would include on my appointment. Um, and I wanted to, and I can go over different objections, different scenarios, but I want to kind of give value to the people that are actually on the call. Um, so if you're on the call, um, I guess you, you can unmute or you could put uh, in the chat your question um, and what, anything with the in-home, I, I will go over. And then, okay, so I had a question here. What would you say if they are reluctant to share their bank information? Um, and we all get this all the time. So it's just going to depend when you get that. And that's also, and I glad, I'm glad you brought that up because I didn't really hit on it. But in the beginning, that's why I'm not straight to the throat. I'm going to need your bank information. I'm going to need your social. Like that's like going to, I've shared this before. It's like going to, um, you're going to buy a car, you're going to the car lot. And then before you can see any cars, they take you to the finance department automatically. All right. So we're going to need, um, we're going to need your routing account number, your social, we're going to uh, run your credit history. We're going to do all of this. Um, and, and then after you do that, um, we're going to have all your information and then you might see if you like a car here, maybe. Um, and it's completely backwards. So you don't, you don't want to do that. You go see the car first. You see how much it costs. They show you how much it's going to cost a month. And then if you want it, then you go to the finance guy. He tries to obviously upsell you and all the cool stuff. But, um, but and that, that's why in the beginning, I'm building, I'm, I'm not building, you can call it report if you want, but I don't, I, I don't consider that really rapport. Like in the beginning, the why and, and getting the beneficiary out, that is where I'm opening up to them. They see I'm a real person that I truly care that I'm there to help them. And, and that's when they're going to trust me. And then when I say, when then later, when I'm going through the structure, when I say I need your social bank information, you don't get objections very often. It's very rarely in home where I'll get that objection anymore um, just because of what I do on the front end and they trust me. But if they don't trust you or respect you, you ain't getting anything. Um, okay. got another one here. Are you asking in the beginning if they are looking to cover a burial or cremation or just including that part in the options? Um, awesome question. Um, so with final expense, it depends. So, cause you get to that after the income question. So you, you get their income. If they do have a lot of income and a lot of income left over, I'm not asking that just because if they've got five grand left over, but they just want a cremation, I'm not going to just show them a three, four, five thousand dollar $5,000 policy if they have the money to afford more. Um, and honestly, there's no value there either for them. Like if they've got a lot of the money left over, a small little three, four, five thousand dollar policy is no value to them, um, to that type of person. So with that, then I just automatically I'll max it out, do the 30, 40 with uh, with with Eagle, and then show two other options. So that's where I'll show higher amounts. Um, but if money is super tight, then I will absolutely ask that. Um, and that, that's where I get after. So you, you got about 50 bucks left over a month. So is there, uh, were you wanting uh, Rebecca to like bear you, cremate you? Um, ideally, what were you, what were you looking for to happen if you could? And then have them, have them talk to you. And that's sometimes I would, I, I would like to be buried, but I know it's more expensive. So probably cremation. And then, and, and you'll tie that in together to the appointment later. Like, um, and then you'll show the three different options. This will take care of your cremation. This one will take care of your burial, burial and, and more kind of how I did that. And you're just tying it all kind of together. And then, and, and with that scenario, like we could start with the, like you get the objection. We could start with the lowest option. This, this first option will take care of the cremation. That's what you need worst case scenario. But I do know you wanted to get buried so like later, later down the road, if you get your finances in order, we could 
bump you from that plan to the burial plan where it takes care of everything. Um, so, so something like that. Um, let me see here. I think you had another one in there. Um, it's super wordy. It's, it's, so my question is, um, what if they're worried about the draft date? I run a lot of final expense. People get paid on specific days of the um, month, like first, second, or first or the third, second Wednesday, whatever. And I notice like sometimes you have to push to meet that. But if all you're doing is final expense and you're just always pushing draft dates, you know, some of those are going to charge back because if they don't have the money saved right now, can they afford to keep it long term? So do you have like word trap tracks you use to get the first payment to draft right away? I think you get my drift. Yes. Um, I've been all over like this. This is a great question, especially for anyone brand new, like brand new. Everybody's like, they didn't have the money. So I, I, I future drafted it. I couldn't do anything. And I've been all over the place with it, like what you do. Um, it's probably, I mean, there's, there's not probably a, like a perfect answer. Um, one, I'll say like li literally if they have no money in their account right now, they, they can't afford it. So we, there's, you're forced to future draft it. Um, and but yes, future drafts come with the risk of a lot of chargebacks. Way more chargebacks come from future drafts than non-future drafts, just uh, stats from the carriers. So if you can, I would avoid it at all, basically any way you could, I would, I would absolutely avoid it. Um, and they'll tell you if they can't afford it, but I mean, because those are little, if you want to call them objections, whatever they are, they'll tell you, um, oh, I don't have the money in my account. Um, so I can't have this come out until the first of next month. Got it. Okay. Um, so basically how it, how this works, and this comes back to structure. They told you they don't have the money. Um, yeah. Kind of how this works is because um, once we, we send this off, they'll obviously give us the final approval. Um, sometimes it's today, sometimes it's a couple days, but once you're approved, they'll process everything. Um, in the next few days, they'll take that first payment. They'll send the whole policy in the mail to you. Um, you should get that in the next 10 days after that. And then you have your 30 days to kind of figure out if you want to keep it up the coverage, over the coverage, all that type of stuff. Um, and, but more importantly for your case that if you want it to the first and we can change the draft date for, uh, the, uh, going forward. Um, and then we could, I could definitely change it to the first. And then <clears throat> that's how I usually get all of them because uh, then because they'll tell you they don't have it, but then they actually do. They just don't want it to come out yet. They don't want to start it yet. They just want to, they're good for the next month and they just want it to go into the next month. Um, and if they don't, they'll, they'll literally tell you like, well, because I had a guy like, uh, I mean, that's fine. You, you guys can try drafting. You ain't going to get anything because there's no money in there. <laughs> and it's, it's like, okay. Um, and then there, like, you got a future draft. There's nothing you can really do there. Um, last thing I would do before future drafting it um, is, um, got it. Okay, what we, and just kind of acting confused, what we, I guess what we could do is, um, I guess two options. I guess we, we could, uh, if we're going to put your, your checking down, um, do you think you'd move the money from your savings to your, your checking, or, or would you rather put your, your savings account um where where the draft comes out or how, how how did you plan on doing it and kind of do it like that and then um literally like someone that's literally broke broke then i mean there's nothing you can do besides with those people it's controversial like with those people i would probably prefer future draft it just because um like if that's the only time they're getting paid that's when they're gonna have the money and then it's just automatically taken out kind of like medicare um so that's probably how I would do it, um, if that answers your question. Um, cool. Okay, so does anyone else have any other in-home questions whatsoever? Uh, what things I, I touch on, questions I ask, objections you're getting or you've been getting that you can't overcome? Now's the perfect time to ask. I'll, I mean, I have a million questions I can ask you. Um, so what about, um, and I know 
I'm kind of working on this one myself, but I might help new people. So what about the, I want to think about it um, and, and talk to my kids before I make any final decisions. Like you have like a single old lady mm -hmm. and my kids told me not to make any final decisions um, without talking to them first. I just wanted to see my options. Yeah. And um, so that's going to be, that's going to happen after you show, show the options and one um, just the straight think about it. Uh, I'll hit that first. So, um, and which is always fine because I'm always downselling, um, always. So I don't care what option. I literally don't care what option they pick. Um, all that matters is there. I'm, I'm protecting a family by the time I leave. So um, like, I, I want to think about it. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Um, actually, most people I sit with, they, they actually do want to think about it because I get it. I'd want to too. Um, but what everyone does is they just go with the, the, the cheapest option. Uh, and then once we get you approved, if, and you, and, and you think about it, they actually give you 30 days to think about it, not just a couple days, which is kind of nice. And then you can always up it later if you want to, if you keep it the same, you keep it the same. It doesn't really matter. My whole job is to actually see if you can be approved. And then I follow that up with a question. Super important. You don't just say that and then just look at them. Uh, and expect them to close the deal for you it's i say that and then so so yeah i just want to see if you want to, if you can get be be approved with the cheapest one then and then that now they have to answer a question um and then the one with i got to talk about it with my kids um they told me not to make any final decisions um so i'll probably handle that with two overcoming two objections at the end with that kind of example um because i basically like the i would go to the first one i just went over like you have 30 days to think about it you go with the cheapest option you can think about it and talk about it with your kids and then uh figure out if you want to increase it or decrease it keep it the same and then they give you another one no they don't want me to make any decisions or anything like that um yeah i I get that. Um, makes, makes a lot of sense actually, but, uh, cause you're not, you have the 30 days to think about it. So it's not a final decision until you figure out if you want to keep it within that 30 days. But I, I guess, um, do you think your kids would be, be upset if you put something in place to protect them? That's going to give them the money to pay for your, your burial. So they don't have to come out of pocket. Do you think they would be upset with that? And then, have them tell you they'll always say well no but i still just want to make sure that they understand because this is for them and uh, yeah absolutely they should 100 percent understand what you're getting but that's what's great about the 30 days is because once you're approved you get the policy in the mail and then uh you guys can review that together and i'll gladly come back out and review it with all of you guys where we can sit down and we can go over your policy so they know exactly what you have and you know exactly what you have. Cause that's super important. And then you can figure out if you want to increase or keep it the same or, or, uh, I mean, if you, and then if you don't want it, then obviously you have that time to do that too. Um, <clears throat> so something like that. Do you do that confused? Like, I don't know why you wouldn't buy anything that technique. Like you just seem like totally confused. Do you use that? Like in, in your appointments? So that, Absolutely. I use it on the phone. I use it in the appointment. Like when you're, how you talk to people is a hundred percent on if they're going to honestly buy from you or not. Like I could say the exact same thing, but in a different way and just literally just talking to them and they don't, they perceive it different. Like we're dealing with 21st century people are, their red flags are always up. Scammers, people hacking them, all this other stuff. So you have to be, you got to diffuse and bring people's guard down and be more from there, not, not selling them, but helping them and solving their problem. Like, I don't have a problem. My family is good. If something happens to me, I got a crap load of life insurance. My, like, if I, if I don't come home tomorrow, my, my wife is good. I'm actually worth more dead than alive. And, and so just diffusing and acting confused, like, like everyone gets this and I like just asking a question of, of that way. And then when you do that, their guard comes down. It's like, this guy 
is not a professional salesman. Like if, if you, we're saying, honestly, we're saying somebody could tell you like, man, you're a good salesman. Like you do not want that. Like they, they, they feel like they're being only time someone would say that is like, if someone's in sales and those are the only type of people that re, like respect sales, anyone else, they hate you. Don't matter what you're selling. So that's the worst thing anybody could say to you. So you don't want to, you want to have the answers to the questions that they have, but you're just, you want to kind of act confused. Like we're, we're solving your problem here. And so you take a step back, you stutter a little bit, you, your, your tone comes down. Cause you, you could like, for example, um, I want to think about it. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Most people want to think about it. So what most people do is if you want to think about it, you just go with the cheapest option. And then um, at that point, then you kind of have 30 days. Uh, if you want to up it, cool. If you want to lower it, then, then you can do that too. Or a uh, better way is I want to think about it. Got it. Okay. Yeah. So what um, most, most people do want to think about it. Um, and what most people do is they, they just go with the, the cheapest option to see if we can get you approved. And then, um, then you, then you can up it if you want to lower it, keep it the same. It doesn't really matter, but, uh, but yeah, you, you just want to go ahead and see if you can get a proof of that one. And then like night and day different and, and way, and way better in my opinion, it works for me. Um, not the best way, but, but it, it helps me a lot, but, um, so any other questions uh, before we wrap it up? No? All right. Well, I appreciate everyone jumping on. If there's anything um, that I could ever do for, for anyone, feel free to reach out. Uh, find me on, uh, I probably should use Instagram more, but I mainly just use Facebook. So uh, again, my name is Colton Dewar. If there's anything I could do to help anyone within FFL SkyPoint, uh, I am open. To, to do so um but let's go finish out the day have a killer dial day and help some families thanks everybody